Howdy y'all, Caleb here. Today we're going to talk about what models to buy if you're starting a Seraphon army or you're looking to expand your Seraphon army, but we're looking towards the new Battle Tome that is coming out here pretty soon. I don't know exactly when it's coming out, but it should be in the next few months. So we have seen GW release a lot of these uh, sweet teasers for the new models that they're going to be updating for us. And those look amazing. Those look awesome. Uh, definitely be looking forward to buying some of those and upgrading our army with those models. But there's a lot of stuff that we have currently, or that we have had, that looks like it's probably gonna be phased out. So we'll go through some of that in this video. I don't have any insider information, um, <laughs> despite me trying to uh, uh, get GW to give me some some uh, preview stuff. They have not responded. So I'm in the same boat you are. This is pure speculation, so let's go with it and see how we think. Um, Here's a, a few of the new models that they've they've previewed for us. We got the new Slon coming. We've got some uh, the the Skink Riders along with the Source Riders that are that are being new models for us. Uh, the the Source Warriors are getting updated. We have a couple heroes that are getting updated. So all that is going to be great. But we're gonna look at the stuff that they are phasing out and maybe what we should buy. Uh, we've seen their store has taking a lot of stuff offline and I think that kind of gives us a, gave us a hint for a little while about what's getting replaced and what's kind of getting phased out where we used to have well it may have been, may have been close to 60 um, different units on the seraphim page now we're down to 17 so they removed a lot um, in preparation for our line refresh so we're going to use that kind of as our basis for what is still worth purchasing what can you actually still buy um, I think the things that are safe to buy right now are here on this page. One of them is Croak. Now, Croak has is, is always been in an interesting place in that GW has a hard time kind of balancing Croak on his power level and his points. There's been times in our history where Croak has been overpowered and then times where you just don't even take him on the board, but... Uh, but he's still usable to some extent. You know, you could have a fun list with him, so... Lord Croak is, is, I think, as close as it comes to our centerpiece model. This big, giant, ornate, beautiful model that you can put on the board. Has some very powerful spells. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do with his War Scroll. But I think Croak is one of those models that is safe to buy because it'll probably be usable in, in some point in the new Battle Tome. Um, Skinks. I also have Skinks on here. Skinks are kind of the... Um, the all around unit, you, you, you'll find a place for them, uh, regardless of, of how good or bad the War Scroll is. As long as their points are, are low, like they've always been, and battle line, you'll end up slotting them into some army. So a box of skinks still comes with 24. Weird number. But uh, get to painting some of those. A great test model if you're looking to try out some uh, color schemes for Seraphon, because it comes with four extra models. You've got four models that you can play around with before you start painting the actual one. So a box of skinks is always useful. The skink star priest I have on here, he is still um, available. Well, he's not actually available. He's sold out on their website, but he's still listed there. So if you can find the skink star priest, um, he has been a staple in just about every list we've had for a long time. So hopefully he'll keep the, the, the buffs that he does right now. Uh, I'm sure we'll see his role change a little bit, but a very nice model to paint and has always been useful. I also have the Stegadon kit on here, and I think the Stegadon is a pretty safe bet, especially if you build it as the Engine of Gods. Now, you can very easily just uh, magnetize the hero on it, um, magnetize your the crossbow that goes on it, and you can use the Stegadon kit as the Stegadon Chief, the Engine of Gods, or the Battle Line Stegadon. Uh, one of those is going to be good in this next Battle Tome. Uh, if, if I were to bet money on it, it's Engine of the Gods. The Engine of the Gods has been playable almost the entire time uh, Seraphon has been out. And so that's probably what I would build mine as. But it, you, can, you, can, you can kit it out to do whatever you want to. I think it's still a very good model. I'd, it's one of my favorite models, the Stegadon. Uh, it looks great on the table, and it's a lot of fun to play with. So you can't go wrong with one of those. Same for Bastildon. Uh, you know, Bastildons have been played in lists for as long as I can remember back in the the old Thunder Lizard days, all the way to the new Thunder Lizard days. So hopefully we'll see some some rules that, that make it fun to use still. 
and you can you can pretty easily magnetize the solar engine which is like the laser that goes on top and the skinks or the the snakes uh, weapon that goes on top so keep both of those handy depending on which one might turn out good but the Basildon should still be playable hopefully it's it's the toughest unit in the game it's held that uh it's held that distinction a few times it's no longer the toughest unit in the game right now but uh, hopefully it'll get back to that <laughs> So that, I think those are my safe to buy. Let me know if you've got another safe to buy unit that you think is going to stick around. Um, these I have listed as buy if you like the model. We don't Obviously, we don't know what the War Scrolls are going to be. Carnosaurs could be completely broken. Who knows? That would be a lot of fun because Carnosaurs have, are, are, are kind of our... The model you think of when you think of Seraphon. These big dinosaurs and a lizard man riding a dinosaur. That's that's exactly what we won this army for. A lot of us have come into this army because of this model, the Carnosaur. It's just such a great model. Um, and it really appeals to the dinosaur uh, fans out there. But it's never really been that great on the table. Look, we end up taking it right now in current list because it's so cheap. <laughs> Hopefully they'll fix that. Hopefully they'll give the Jaws some rend. Um, and it'll get better, especially if these new Saurus Agrodons are any good. Maybe the Carnosaur can help buff them up. So I would say if you like the model, go ahead and buy it and start painting it up. It'll probably have some use um, in the new Battle Tome. No telling how good it'll be, but it is a great model to paint. Another one is the Saurus Guard. It doesn't look like they're updating the Saurus Guard. And, and we are getting the new Saurus Warriors, but not the new Saurus Guard. Uh, they're still available, and the box right now is actually pretty inexpensive for what you get in it, so it's a good value, and Guard have kind of had that weird place too. I'm hoping they kind of get a little bit of a glow up to where they're as, as tough and punchy as they look, um, and hopefully not just the, the guards for Croak or the Slon. But even if they are that, they usually have some benefit in that you'll run them in a croak list 100% of the time. And you'll run them a lot of times in a slon list just to keep the slon alive. So I think they're a pretty safe bet, um, but not required. If you like the model and they are pretty good, then go ahead and get someone to paint those up. The other two I have on here to buy if you like the models are the two war bands. And I think the war bands are useful as... Not so much as the war band, but as the individual units they are. So if we look at the Star Blood Stalkers there on the bottom right, um, I don't know that you'd ever take that war band, but it makes for a good, you know, skink priest or star priest, whichever one is going to be the one of those models makes a good one for that. The Saurus model makes a good old blood, depending on what it's going to look like, and then the other ones, you know, have their various uses as skinks. So um, if you like the models, it's a it's a great little unit to paint up. The other one, the Hunters of Huanche, are, are very good right now. The Terror Wings are just fantastic. But if they lose that ability, then all of a sudden you're just going to toss them in the trash. They have a great ability in the shooting phase, but who knows if that makes it through the next Battle Tome. The rest of that, that Warband is basically Chameleon Skinks. And it looks like we're losing Chameleon Skinks, but these guys will stick it around. So um, I think it's a safe, safe unit to buy, especially if you like the the models in it and should still be usable to some extent either as this warband or chameleon skinks in the new edition although chameleon skinks it looks like they're just gonna be renamed as the hunters with blowpipes is probably what the what uh, is gonna stick around so uh, my next category is avoid until the battle tome is released these are still available to buy but i would caution against buying any of these because they have a, a bit of a tumultuous past. So the the Saurus Eternity Warden there uh, has not been very good for a long time. Um, it used to be run in a very specific um, list. Man, what was that? Was that the was, the, was that the Croak NATO where you would take him? It's been so long now. But he really hadn't been run much. And he's still in fine cast. And so that's an, it's an odd one that they're keeping around. Um I, I love the model. It's great. Hopefully it'll buff up Source Guard to, to actually do something this time. But if not, uh, you know, you might want to hold off and wait on that one. 
The other one is a Troglodon, a fun model, a nice model to build. I'm not crazy about the Skink Rider on top, but I really like the, the Troglodon Rider or the Troglodon Monster. But the Troglodon is kind of in the same boat. It's always it's always had this weird war scroll. You know, early on, it was like a it was like a deep striking monster that did no damage. <laughs> but now it's it's basically just a buff for Lord Croak. Um, so kind of an odd place, and and I don't know that I would buy it and build it before we know what the battle tome looks like. Uh, the same kind of goes for the Pterodon Riders and the Ripperdactyls. They have at 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 some point in time, each of them has been very good and an auto include. But for the last you know two years, they have they haven't seen the table at all, and so I, I I would avoid buying and painting these guys up until we see what the battle tome looks like. Unless you just love the models, but even then, like the Ripper Dactyls, even if you love the models, like I, I love the Ripper Dactyls, but I'm not going to put them on the board right now because they're terrible. So you might want to wait for the battle tome. They are keeping around the Old Blood on foot, which is this odd model. I don't know that I've ever actually seen the official one on the table. Everybody just uses the one from the Carnosaur kit. But this one's still available. I can't imagine he'll be that good. He might buff some warriors up, would probably be my guess. But uh, I, w I wouldn't do anything with him <laughs> yet because... The, currently, the source uh, old blood on foot is is horrendous. You would never you would never take them on the table. I do have another couple categories here. I, I put these guys in the buy them if you you know like on eBay buy them used and if you like these models they're still going to be valid in the new battle tome. Like the astrolith banner bearer, he's the the new one. You know is an upgrade to this uh, fine cast one. But if you could find this one for cheap. It's it's gonna be a perfectly fine model, and will and will still look good in the army. I think the same goes for the Slon and the Starseer. Um, they're they're fine models. They are getting new, updated ones, but they're they're still similar enough to the newer models that I don't think that big of a difference will will really ruin this one from being playable. So you could easily put this new the old Slon on the new Slon's base size and play it, and nobody's going to have a problem with that. Same with the Starseer. They look very, very similar. The Salamanders are <laughs> an interesting case. That new Salamander looks a lot better than the old, and the old Salamander's kind of always been a joke with how terrible it looks, and uh, made out of metal or resin, depending on which one you can find. But if you do have one of those, you still could use it. It may look a little goofy, because the, the new Salamander's getting on a bigger base, but... If you already have one or if you can find some for cheap, you know, you can end up using those on the bigger size base. And I think the same goes for the Croxagore. The old Croxagore, I've got metal Croxagore, uh, which goes back even older than the current Croxagore. We also have the, the resin Croxagore, and both of those will still work fine. They look to be about the same size as a new Croxagore. So if you can if you can have the if you already have those or if you can find those for cheap. Feel free to, to base those on the new base sizes and, and you're good to go. Uh, Source Warriors, you know, they're kind of goofy looking. They got little chicken legs and we are about to get some new Warriors, but the old ones will still be fine. Um, if, if you can find some of those and you can probably find those for cheap, then you can buy those used and just start preparing some because whether they're used as actual baseline, you know, in an army, build an army around these things or you're just summoning them depending on if that we can even do that in the next edition, uh, then Source Warriors will still be useful. I, I'm looking forward to getting some of the new Source Warriors so that I, I, I've got some really old Source Warriors. I've got the current Source Warriors, and I want the new ones. So hopefully I can I can table a full army of every generation of Source Warriors. That'd be, that'd be fun for me. Uh, one last category is Rest in Peace. This is a sad category to see because it, it appears... Like, all of these models are done. Like, we're getting rid of these models. The biggest one is the Dreadsaurian. I, I don't imagine this is going to continue um, in any any form. We've seen Forge World get rid of a lot of... Well, get rid of all of the um, AOS resin stuff. And and the Dreadsaurian was kind of that, that big piece we had there. It hasn't been good for a while, mostly because of its it's gigantic base that it required and it just couldn't move much around the table. 
It used to be that it's, you know, 35 wounds was unheard of, but now we've got giants on bases a third of the size of his with the same wound count and same save. So uh, that's probably not a bad thing. Hopefully one day they'll give us an updated Dread Saurian model um, in plastic on a smaller base that's actually playable. That would be a lot of fun. Uh, Ripper, Ripper, Don <clears throat> not Ripper Dons, Razor Dons. Looks like they're gone too, unless the unless they have like a secret alternate build for the Salamanders, which they haven't shown us, and I don't think is coming. Uh, it looks like Razor Dons are, are gone too, so don't be picking up any of those. Same for the Source Knights. Now, a lot of us have many uh, Source Knights because it was a good unit that we've been playing with, but Source Knights look like they're gone. So... <laughs> Shed a tear for those those uh, 30 nights on your shelf. <laughs> Chameleon Skinks, probably the same thing. Uh, they're they're not gonna they're not gonna re-release this Chameleon Skink in resin. And I think the hunters with blowpipes have kind of replaced that um, that slot in our unit uh, in our army that plays with the deep striking, mortal wounds, sneaky skinks. The source sun the source sunblood is kind of a, a disappointing removal they've they've removed it from the store and that's kind of sad because it's a it's a fun model i like that model a lot um i've had some fun playing with it lately in the glacian veterans it's not it's not or glacian champions it's not great but uh it was a lot of fun i was i was hoping it would kind of come out with a new war scroll that would be real tanky and real real uh fun to play with but doesn't look like it's coming out so sad uh, skink, skink priest is, looks like it's gone too, which is interesting because we used a lot of those buffs on, on, um, basically all the skink stuff that there was a time when that, when that guy was what 70 points, and you'd take two of them in every army. That's how you started off every army list. I'm hopeful that maybe some of that, um, buff, some of that priest stuff that he does is going to go to maybe either the troglodon or the engine of the gods. That would, that would be pretty cool. Maybe in the form of a prayer for one of those. So that would be interesting. Uh, and then we got also our Scarvet on cold one. That's really just getting, uh, you know, kind of the, the replacement by the Scarvet on Agridon. So, uh, I don't know that you could, I mean, I guess you technically could proxy this as that Scar Veteran on Agrodon, but that Agrodon looks so much better, so much bigger than this. Um, I would go ahead and upgrade when that time when that time comes. So, all right. Uh, I think that's where we're at now. Um, here's our new stuff coming out. Um, I think these ones are the safe to buys for sure. They should be usable in the new Battle Tome. Don't hold me accountable for that because I don't know what's coming in the new battle tome. But uh, let me know what y'all are working on if you're uh, building anything in anticipation of the new battle tome. Uh, we'll see you next time, guys.